hi friends welcome to my channel today i'm going to show you how to decapsulate and decrypt the ike version 2 packet that is the ike auth exchange and the create child exchange and the subsequent esp packet so let me quickly show you the capture uh, by the way this was done on palo alto device so this is the capture for ike version one okay and this is the capture for ike version two you can see here in ike version two you will have four packet exchange um the first two packet exchange is ike sa in it and these two exchange will not be encrypted but then the ike auth packet exchange will be encrypted so let me show you okay so in order to get the keys you will have to run the command debug You will have to run this command debug i global on dump, which is going to dump all the information during the negotiation in the file name ike manager.log. So I already I already have the logs you know written to ike manager.log. So I'm going to show you the keys, how I got the keys and how the keys are different from the ike version one so let me quickly show you the difference between ike version one key and ike version two key so in ike version one well after four packet exchange which is at this point you will generate all the keys and among the keys that you generate one key is sk E Y I D E, which is used for the encryption of the subsequent packet from here. So if you want to decrypt this, well, you will have to get hold of the S K I D E. Okay. So if you go to the table, well, you can see here in Ike version one, you use a single encryption key, a single key for encryption and decryption. So the same key is used for encryption on one end and the same key is used for decryption on the same end, okay? So this, the same key is used on both the ends for the encryption decryption of the negotiation, okay? And mind you, this key is not used for the encryption of the subsequent ESP packet, okay? For that, you will generate the phase two keys which I have already explained in my previous tutorial about how to decapsulate the crib, the I version one, but then I'm showing you the difference. So the difference is in I version one, the same key is used for encryption and decryption, both way for outbound SPI for inbound SPI. And if you check the I version two, well, after this two packet exchange, which is Ike SA in it, you're going to generate the keys. Uh, the keys would be SK seed, and from the SK seed, you will generate SKE initiator, SKE responder. So the, the end who is initiating the negotiation, so the key that is used by that initiator is the SKE initiator, okay? And the same key I'm going to use on my end to decrypt it. So the initiator initiates a traffic which is encrypted. I'm going to use the same key which initiator used on his end to decrypt the packet. Okay, this is one direction. So for the other direction, which is me initiating the encrypted traffic, I'm going to use a different key. So you can see the difference clearly here in Ike version 2. You use two keys on one end. Uh, one key is used for decrypting the incoming packet 
and another key is used for encrypting uh, the packet from your end towards the other end. So uh, the initiator key is the key generated on the initiator and the same key you use it on your end to decrypt it. So let me show you the table, okay? As you can see here, the last entry that you see here, this is the initiator SPI, the remote end who is initiating the connection. So this is the initiator SPI. So uh, this SPI value is actually the value that you see in the ISA camp uh, header, okay? It is uh, more or less like a cookie. And let me show you, for example, okay. So these are the two values. This is the initiator cookie, this is the responder cookie. Okay, so what I was telling you is this. So this is the initiator cookie, this is the responder cookie, and this is the initiator key, okay? The initiator used a key to encrypt the traffic and I'm going to use the same key on my end to decrypt the traffic. How did I get this key? Well, you have to go to this log, okay? Scroll down. Yeah. Palo Alto will give you the S seed and then the subsequent SKE initiator as well. You can see here SK seed. So from this you will generate your initiator key. So you can see here uh, the first packet or the, pa or the third packet from the remote end, Ike, Ike auth. Okay, you can see on the screen. I'm going to decrypt it using my SKEI. Okay, I have updated the same here in the table. You can see here. And then if you scroll down, you will see the key that I use for the encryption. Okay, you can see here, this is a plain text and I'm going to encrypt it using the SKE responder. So I'm going to update this key in the responder field. Unfortunately, uh, Palo Alto does not log the authentication key, SKAI and SKAR. So uh, anyways, I don't want those keys. Uh, I just want to see what are the payloads that is there in the Ike auth packet and the create child exchanges. So this is what you can get it from the log, Ike manager log. Okay, so let me show you. You, you can see on my screen that the encrypted traffic, the encrypted payload, I'm able to decrypt it and I'm able to see all the information. Okay, pause this after I caught exchange, you will then generate two more keys, okay, for the encryption decryption of the actual traffic. Right now we are uh, in the negotiation phase, okay. So after this, if you open up your security association, the SPI value that you see here, let me show you. So this is the SPI value that will be used in your ESP payload, ESP packet. So I can show you that this is used in ESP packet, CD7C. You can see here. So this is the difference between the ESP SPI and the ISA camp SPI. In ISA camp SPI, you basically, you know, treat this value as cookies to uh, avoid any sort of DOS attack. So till now I showed you how to uh, decapsulate, decrypt the iCoth in i version two and the create child essay because the, both are you know encrypted using the same SKEI and SKER. So you can see the information that is there. Okay, this is the encrypted payload of 
create child essay. I'm able to decrypt it and able to see all the information. Okay. And like I said, uh, if you open up your security association, you will get the SPI value and the subsequent uh, ESP packet will be having this SPI value. So um, now let's get back to our ESP packet. Okay. So in order to get for after the iCOT exchange, you will generate two more keys. Okay. One will be for the encryption of the traffic and other will be for the decryption of traffic. So it is basically uh, a direction that decides what you are going to use. Okay. So let me quickly show you the table. Okay, if you see here, the SPI values BDD7. You can see here this entry, BDD7, ending with BDD7. Okay, I have an encryption key. Okay, BDD7. SPI value is for the packet that is coming from the remote end towards my end. Okay, so how I'm going to get this key? The same log will give me the keys. Let us find out. So you can see here, this is me initiating the traffic towards the other end. Now I just want the other way around. Let's try to figure out the ICOT exchange data. Okay, you can see here, this is my traffic selector. This is my end IP, other end IP would be 2.2.2.2. .2 so I guess uh, this is the information that we are looking for. Okay, as you can see here, so this is a traffic selector that I'm talking about, the remote end initiating traffic towards my end. So now if you check the information, you will get the initiator encryption key. Okay, I'm going to find out this encryption key, which is being used by me to decrypt the packet. Okay, since I'm receiving this traffic on my end, I'm going to use the same key for decryption. Like I told you during the negotiation, I do the same thing. So each direction is having a specific key, symmetric key. So you can see here, okay, you can see here the SPI value DD7, okay, and the encryption key of length 24 bytes, you can see here, I just copied this here okay and the authentication if you really want to see the authentication data if it is okay or not so i copy pasted here okay this is this was for the inbound traffic inbound esp packet that was coming to me i was using this key to decrypt the traffic and in the same way I will have the outbound SPI, which is me initiating the traffic towards the other end with the SPI value of D7C. D7C, you can see here, I'm going to put this key, the key that you see here, and the authentication key you can see here. 
So I'm going to put this here. So once you do that, click OK, and then you should be able to see the decrypted packet here. Well, I have already updated the key, so I'm able to see the decrypted packet. You can see here ESP. This is the inbound packet, and I have updated the key. As I can see here, the authentication data is correct because the authentication key that I computed in the table is correct. And this is the content of the ESP, encrypted content. You can see the content, the original content, which is the ICA MP echo request, okay, from the source to towards the destination one, okay. And in the same way, I have another child essay which created another encryption key for one direction and encryption key for our inbound SPI as well as the outbound SPI. So you can get the information again similarly here if you go down. So you can see here, this is the local end. This is the remote end, okay. So you can see here, the SPI value and the corresponding encryption key. So you can use it in the same table, which I showed you along with the authentication so that you can decapsulate it and you will have to do it for both the direction, okay? One is for the inbound uh, for this packet and another for this packet. So outbound, you can see here, it is having a different SPI value and the encryption key. So once you do that, you should be able to see the content. So that's all in this video, guys. If you have any question, leave them in the comment section. And please do subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and stay safe, stay tuned. Have a good day.